for tuning in to Fellowship with the Doorman. I am your host, Evangelist Ed Henry Jr. It's only what's done for Christ will last. All of your worldly gains will soon, soon be past. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, for my sins. We have to impress God, and the only way that we impress God is, is by asking Jesus Christ, His Son, His Son, to come in to our hearts. Speak to the audience out there. You know, they are all door men and door women. Thanks for tuning in today to Fellowship with the Door Man. I am your host. Evangelist Ed Henry Jr. And as I tell you all the time, I'm excited. I'm always excited because Jesus Christ dwells within me. And when he went back to heaven, he left his Holy Spirit. And I'm so gracious and thankful. Hallelujah. Uh, I have a guest pastor here today from Bluefield, West Virginia. Uh, he's a friend of mine. We, uh, we work together. And so He's in Michigan here this weekend, so I'm going to bring him up to you. His name is Pastor Jim Mitchell. Pastor Mitchell, come on up here, my brother. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Love you, man. Thank love you, you so too. much yes, for coming. Yes, thanks for having yeah. me. Right. Amen. Well, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get out of your way, and I'll turn it over to you. All right, thank you. I love you all. Hallelujah. You. God bless you. Elder. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Good evening, church. We do thank God for the opportunity. We thank God for Elder Head Henry Jr. And for having me. Um, a scripture, for those that have your Bibles, will be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. But I do want to go to the throne of grace with bowed head and humble heart this evening. And um, the heading of the text for this scripture would be, where's your trust? So let's go to the throne of grace. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we come to your throne of grace with bowed heads and humble hearts just to say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for last night's rest and early morning rise. This day, a new day, a day we've never seen before or will ever see again. We thank you for the many, many blessings up to this appointed time. We thank you for every house of prayer, every minister, saint, and evangelist that's carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father God, that you're protecting those with this virus that's going around. We ask that you bless those that are bereaving and going through bereavement. We ask, Father God, that you touch every minister, saint, and evangelist that's carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ. Touch every nursing home, every hospital, mental institution, courtroom, penitentiary, caregivers, caretakers. We lift the children of the world up to you, Father God, as they go back to church, to school. And Father God, we ask right now in the precious name of Jesus that you pour out a blessing from heaven, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over on this service that you would touch someone out there in the technology world, someone in Detroit, someone in West Virginia, in the world as a whole. And if I fail to ask this evening, Father God, don't fail the grant. In the precious name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, we rebuke any demonic spirits that would hinder this prayer coming forth. And I ask and pray that you have me behind your cross, season my words and bridle my tongue, and have me say or do no more than you would have me say or do. And I'll be ever mindful to give your name the praise, honor, and worship. In the precious name of Jesus, we claim, believe, receive, and count this prayer as answered. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 2. Where is your trust? And our word tells us we're going to read the scriptures. And I, brother, when I came to you, came not with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined 
not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of the power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, not the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit search of all things, yea, the deep things of God. We have just read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. May God add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his word. We have to be mindful, where is your trust? Then your trust should be in the wisdom of men. No, your trust should be in the wisdom of God. Pa Paul is writing to the church in Corinth, and he's telling the Corinthians that quit looking to, as we do today, the answers from men, the answers from family, the answers from friends. All that you need is in the hands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He says, I'm the super glue for whatever you're going through. He came down through 42 generations to save us from ourselves and take the sin of the world on himself. Who wouldn't serve a God that said, you don't have to trust in man. Trust in God. Lean not to your own understanding. And for so long and oftentimes, we forget that we have promises that God have already promised. That's why I said in that last verse, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has entered the heart of man Great things that God has prepared for them that love him. All you have to do is love God because he went a step further with that agape love. Agape love is unconditional love. A love that no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've been through, no matter what your test was, your trial or tribulation, he has said, cast all your cares on me for I care for you. Then he tells us in Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So we have to be mindful of that. All things are possible with God. We look to the world for the answers, but God created the world, so he's the answer for the world and his creation. And we don't want to trust in our own understanding. The word tells us the Holy Spirit is our teacher and our guide. That's where you get the wisdom of God. It's by that spirit that in the wells in these bodies being activated by the word of God by trusting in God, leaning on God, depending on God. Who wouldn't serve a God that said, cast all your cares on me for I care for you? And then we go to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, and it says three, three words in that verse. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. And we have to have the mindset of God. The scripture says, let this mind in me be the mind of Christ. Now, if Jesus... When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, the flesh part of him didn't want to die for us. He said, Father, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, Father, not my will, but your will be done. So if we have the mindset of Christ, we're thinking like him, and we're understanding like him, and wherever God has us, we'll be happy. Job even said it. I will be happy where my God has me till my change comes. So in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, it says, in all things give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 
What's going on with you is not what's going on with me, but everybody's going through something. Amen. My something ain't yours, your something ain't mine, but we have to be thankful. It's easy to praise him when things are going good, because praise is what we do as Christians. But we have to be mindful. Not only do we praise him, but when you're going through something, can you still worship him? Worship is what activates God. Praise is what activates God. Prayer is what activates God. So we have to be mindful of the God we serve and what he has done. He says, I'm Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. I am the creator. In the beginning, see this thing started spiritually in the beginning before creation. It says in the beginning, God created. It didn't say man. It didn't say mama. It didn't say daddy. God created. So I want to miss have a relationship with a God that has power over everything. Amen. Now, we have to be mindful that if we look at the scriptures, he also tells us in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. All you got to do is be a whosoever. There's no stipulation. There's no resume. God already knows your resume. Because in Jeremiah 1 and 5, he says, I knew you before you were even conceived in secret. Now, we want to be mindful of this as well. That your life was preordained before the foundation of the world. God knew where you would go, what you would do, what you would go through. But if God brings you to it, he can take you through it. Amen. So we have to be mindful of the God that we serve. And we have to look at others the same way. God looked past our fault and saw our need. We have to look past the faults of others and see their need. The scripture says, where I'm weak and there you are strong, lift me up. Because where God has gave you a certain gift, and he didn't give it to me. Use that gift to help me, and I'll use my gift to help you. After a while, there's gifts going around everywhere. Amen. But if you don't use what God gave you, they have a natural term. If you don't use it, you lose it. So we have to be mindful of what we have. He said, I have poured my spirit out on all flesh. So we have the spirit of God, but that spirit has to be activated. Then you don't see the world in a natural view. You see the world in a spiritual view. You start looking past false seeing need. You, you can see hope. You can see trust. You can find faith. You understand grace. You understand mercy. And you also understand the things that God has prepared for you. This is a day that the Lord has made. He prepared this day. It was grace and mercy that got us to, to this day so far through this day, and will take us on out of this day. If you don't understand grace, you can't understand mercy. Grace is giving us what we don't deserve. Mercy is not giving us what we do deserve. Who wouldn't serve a God once again that said, I have prepared things for you, but he can't give you what you're not ready for. Sometimes when we uh, get into the word and we get a revelation of word, I'm challenging everybody out there, quit reading your word. The word of God says not to read, but meditate. If you read the word of God, you get an understanding. But if you meditate on the word of God, you get a revelation. The word tells us in Joshua 1 and 8, the simplicity of making it through this side of life spiritually, not naturally, is to stay in the book. Joshua 1 and 8 says, in this book of the law, meditate therein, day and night, to show thyself approved, according to all that is written therein, and thy way shall be made prosperous, and ye shall have great success. Now, in that success, we also have to understand that we have to wait on the Lord. Psalms 27, 14 says, wait. First word in that verse is wait. Wait on the Lord, and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. And the last verse says, wait on the Lord. Amen. Quit jumping the gun on God. Stay in alignment with God. God gives us a free will. He won't make us do anything, but he desires that we do 
his will and not our own. So oftentimes, the way we get out of balance or we come to that fork in the road is because we're not listening to that little still voice. When we were natural, you know what we said? Something told me. But when you get into the spiritual, you know the anointing of the Holy Spirit is talking to you because he is our teacher. He is our guide. The word of God empowers us to understand some of how God thinks. In Isaiah 53, the word tells us God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So he's not going to do what we do. He's not going to say what we say because his wisdom is far beyond our understanding. Because if you look at the premise of the creation of the world, what God did was he made a tree. He put the stars in the sky. He sent a virgin, a son, through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but I done read the word. I ain't never heard of another man could do that because he's not man. He's deity. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. And you have to know who the God is that you serve. But let's keep it 100 in here today. Some people are serving another God, the God of this world. Because there is a God of this world, and his name is the adversary. His name is the devil. His name is Lucifer. He got kicked out of heaven, took a third of the angels with him. And he does not like you. His job is to kill, steal, and destroy. And he's good at it. He's been doing it since the beginning of being cast down. So he's been doing this before Adam and Eve. So he's been doing this because he does not like us. Man. He was jealous when God created us. And so what we have to be mindful of, there's somebody out there. He, he, if he can't get you, he'll get you children. If he can't get your children, he'll get you siblings. If he can't get your siblings, he'll get your cousins. So we have to be empowered by the word, activate that spirit that indwells in these bodies, tell a dying world about a living God, ask somebody to be positioned in your path, petition God, say, Lord, send somebody by me where I can tell them what they need to do to be saved. Romans 10 and 9 tells us, confess Jesus Christ as Lord of your life and believe that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. It didn't say might. That word says shall be saved. So we have to be mindful that we serve a God that only wants the best for us Amen. because he sent his best down through 40 and two generations. And that best was himself because he put on flesh and walked among us. John tells us in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. Who do you know can turn flesh into word and then word back into flesh and he sits at the right hand of the Father? We all have gifts that were given to us. Use the gift that God has given you. Don't waste that gift. Pass it on to somebody else. Because if you're serving God, your children will serve God. Yeah. If you're trusting God, your children will trust God. If you want God to open up your understanding of his word and his will in your life, and if you praising and you worshiping and you believing without a shadow of a doubt, Hebrews 11, 1 tells us now, the, the, word in, the first word in that verse says now, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I can't see it, but I believe it's coming yeah. because God said it and that sells it. But faith without works is dead also in that chapter. And it says also in that chapter, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we want to be mindful of what it takes to please God. God is happy when we lean on him once again and trust on him and look to the hills from whence come of our help. All of our help comes from God. We can't do nothing without him. We can't walk without him. We can't talk without him. We can't breathe without him. And one of the promises, he's made many, but one that sticks with me 
is he has said that I desire that you would have life and have it more abundantly. And he also said that I am the truth, the way, and the life. And nobody gets by the Father but by me. So we have to be mindful that we serve a God that we can't even get an audience with unless we go through his son, Jesus Christ. So we want to be mindful of that. And we also want to be mindful that if we, if God takes one step, we'll, we'll have to only take a half a step. If we take two steps, God will take three. So we have to be, be mindful. And Psalms tells us a lot of times in this world what we forget is the way it says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's Psalms 27, 13. So we have to be mindful of where we are. We're in the land of the living. We have to be mindful that we serve a God that looked past fault and saw need. Once again, I want to thank for, uh, God for the opportunity. Thank Evangelist Ed Henry for the opportunity. Also, we're going to be uh, blessed with uh, uh, Elder Ed Henry's latest song. Uh, and the song, wait a minute. Oh, here it is. And the song is, The Fight is Fixed. And we're going to do a quick pray out of thanking God right now for the opportunity, thank God for his word, thanking God for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and thanking God for each of you and Elder Henry. God bless you, heaven smile upon you. May the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you throughout the course of the week. God bless. Elder Henry. God bless you. Thank you, my brother. God bless Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I, I know you love my brother because he, he came on strong. He came on strong. Brother Mitchell, Pastor Mitchell, I thank you so much for coming from Bluefield, West Virginia. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, had some shout outs from McDowell County in Bluefield. Uh, Peggy Wilson. Thanks, Peg. Reginald Best, all the way from Excelsior High School. Naomi Jesus and Michelle Hargrave. All right. Hallelujah. You know her, don't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sister Gloria Berry, thank you. I thank you all so much for tuning in today to Fellowship with the Doorman. I'm going to do my latest song. It's called The Fight is Fixed. The Fight is Fixed if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Come Amen. On. If you know Jesus, the fight is fixed. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Right. The fight is fixed from Genesis to Revelation. All you gotta do is read your scripture. The fight is fixed from Genesis to Revelation. Listen, don't take him for granted or take his name in vain. Jesus is the one who went through all the pain. Eternal life in Jesus comes when you trust him. You show his love, you spread the word, you are the danger. That's what the Bible says. Read it! Woo! The fight is fixed. From Genesis to Revelation, oh, all you gotta do is read your scripture. The fight is fixed. From Genesis to Revelation, oh, all you gotta do is read. Let me tell you this, little David slew Goliath, a mighty man. Goliath didn't fear my God; he didn't stand a chance. The walls of Jericho. Just
scripture The mind is fixed From Genesis to Revelation All you gotta do Is read your scripture Woo! Don't take his name in vain Jesus is the one who went through all the pain Eternal life in Jesus come When you trust him Show his love, you spread the word, you arm the danger. That's what the Bible says. Read it, y'all. Woo! The mind is fixed from Genesis to Revelation. All you gotta do is read your scripture. The mind is fixed from Genesis to Revelation. All you gotta do is read your scripture. Little David slew Goliath, a man in vain. Jesus is the one who went through all the pain. Eternal life in Jesus come. When you trust him, you show his love, you spread the word, you own the danger. That's what I said now. The Bible said that. Woo! The fight is fixed from Genesis to Revelation. Is read your scripture. The fight is fixed from Genesis to Revelation. All you gotta do is read your scripture. Little David slew Goliath, a mighty man. Goliath didn't fear my God, he didn't stand a chance. The walls of Jericho came tumbling down. After seven days, the mighty shout they walked around walk on hey slow walk Woo. don't take him for granted or take his name in vain Jesus the one that went through all the pain David slew Goliath the mighty man Goliath didn't fear my God he didn't stand a chance he didn't stand a chance he didn't stand a chance. Fight his face. Read your Bible. Give God the glory. He's worth it. All you gotta do. Fight his face from Genesis to Revelation. All you gotta do is read your script. Hallelujah. I just gotta meditate and thank God for the privilege. You know why? He didn't stand a chance. He didn't stand a chance. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you don't stand a chance. Amen. 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 You don't stand a chance. I thank you so much for tuning in to Fellowship with the Doorman, and I urge you to please continue to support us. Call us. Give us a call. Amen. Hallelujah. I see where my my cousin, Sierra Denise Mays, girl, I'm so glad you tuned in. Thank you so much. Uh, Pastor Mitchell, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. And Georgia, my brother, God you brought a good word. But God. Didn't he bring a good word, y'all? God. Hallelujah. God. Didn't he? Amen. Thank you, Jesus, but for God. the opportunity. For the opportunity. Thank you. Jesus. For tuning in to Fellowship with the Door, man. We'll see you in, the, in a week or so. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless.
everybody? This is your girl Vicky Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching Bell Global Network.